a beginning. Or we might start with initially or the process of making blank begins with. So we're in a second grade classroom and they're doing a unit on supply and demand and goods and services. I'm going to look for a team that's got ready their sentence telling me about the manufacturers doing what they do here. Following this or after that, the manufacturers Turn and create your sentence in your team. After that, so following on this, the manufacturers bring the cotton, bring the cotton to the denim factory. She's got these three different levels of English language learners in her classroom. And in looking at the ELD standards for second grade, those different levels require different levels of scaffolding. You are going to take our sequencing graphic organizer, you are going to sketch the process of cotton planted genes and you are going to tell the story to your partner. You're going to practice telling the story. She excused the bridging students to go off and work with a partner using a graphic organizer to recreate the steps from cotton to genes and then orally practice that with a partner. Initially, the farmer grows the gene, grows the cotton, and then he transports the cotton to the manufacturers. The manufacturer workers make denim fabric, cut and sew and assemble them. And then the consumers, at the end, the consumers buy the jeans. When Sabrina began this unit about three weeks ago, she really began by teaching all of her students about this idea of sequence. So while the other students were engaged in independent or collaborative activities, she pulled that small group of students to the carpet. She called them her dual language superstars. And in that designated ELD time, she began really intentionally teaching the language of sequence. So next step in the process following this, after that, Christian, which one do you want to use? The next step in the process. Are you, are you ready? The next step in the process Transport. was when, let's say that, was, was when the farmer, the farmer, let me hear it, the, the farmer, farmer transported, I love it, transported the Cotton, cotton to the manufacturer. The cotton to the manufacturer. So the cotton. So he did it in the past. So the farmer transported that cotton. Beautiful. During designated ELD, we're doing two things. We're thinking about how to prepare for the lesson. And so here you saw her front loading some of the language and really giving students a chance to orally practice what they were later going to be doing independently or with the whole group. So she was preparing them for that. Following this, who did what? The factory. The factory workers. What did they do? What did they do in the past? Did they made. make it? They mm, made. Let me think. Made. I just heard it. They made, made the, the they made the made denim fabric. fabric. Beautiful. The other part of designated ELD is in response to. So you saw some of the work she had been doing is really listening to her students and then identifying oh, this group of kiddos is really struggling with verbs in the past tense. And so she's done some really intentional work around verbs and really responding to what she saw and heard. You are going to sketch the process of cotton planted genes. While she's working with this designated ELD group, the rest of the class, her English-only students, are engaged in collaborative activities. All right, class, I'm going to go over with you our collaborative task menu. This is going to be your choices for this time while I go ahead and work with my dual language superstars. Here are your choices during this time with your partner. First, you may work on your supply, demand, and lemonade poster. So while the teacher is pulling a small group for designated ELD, she needed uh, activities 
for her English only students to be engaged in. You're going to also have the choice of working on a cooperative narrative retell that you started yesterday with your partner. She wanted those activities to be high level, to build on oral language, and to be content based. Using what kind of language? using the language of sequence. So she gave them a menu of a variety of different activities. And then finally, you may choose to do with your partner a from to research project where you're going to choose one of our from wood to paper, from cow to shoe, from clay to bricks. So she had a collection of books that talked about how something went from a natural resource into a product. Students then had a chance to read those books together and work collaboratively to create graphic organizers, naming those steps, and then use that sequential language to orally tell each other about what they had learned in the book. You mix it with clay, water, and so they need this little machine here mm -hmm. to do it the exact same. There was the removal of the scaffold of the teacher. They had had the opportunity to practice with her and then they were able to do that independently. Once there was a, a hungry farmer who lived in a rural area. Initially the farmer was out of bread, so he went to butcher, but no bread was delivered. Earlier in the unit she had done a narrative input about the hungry farmer and students had had a chance to go through and dramatize the narrative and act it out and then they had taken that into a graphic organizer and a story map to tell what happened in that narrative. You can choose to start a business, write your business plan, and then you may go ahead and design your storefront that's going to go on our living wall. Another collaborative activity that students were engaged in was in creating some materials that they were going to use for their living wall. What goods or services will you offer? Haircuts? How much, How much will your goods or service, service cost? Four dollars <laughs> The partners had created a business plan to design what sort of business they'd like to create, what their advertising slogan would be, and designing what their storefront would look like. Go cuts, best in the world. Cool cuts. Name it. Do, we do it. We do it. <laughs> These collaborative activities or tasks are based on the content of her unit and are really opportunities for them in partners or threesomes to process the information with a friend. So maybe the next thing we could do is do sentence four and five? Yeah. And maybe you should add a period right there. Yeah. They're engaged in writing, they're engaged in reading, they're engaged in oral rehearsal of different things that they've done whole class and now are having the opportunity to engage in a smaller group. And then they put it in the oven, a super hot one. And then it's all dried and they just need glue, wood, and all that. She spent a long time working with her students in order to be able to pull the small group, but the beauty of collaborative tasks is that they are highly engaging and they're intriguing to the students and they didn't feel the need to come up and interrupt because they were engaged and excited. One of the other collaborative activities that students have really enjoyed in this classroom and in all our SEAL classrooms is the research center. Everybody gets 20. Everybody gets 20. Thank you. It's that opportunity for students to take on those identities of the consumer and the seller and the distributor and the merchants. Five dollars, please. And to do some play. You'll notice through their language when they're in there, they're getting to practice those words in a fun but meaningful way as they take on those different identities. At the end of this time of designated ELD working with a small group, it was then time for integrated ELD. So those students came back to their heterogeneous groups. They began with a chant, again reinforcing the content of the unit. The next step in the process is manufacturing. As well as another chant that focused on that sequencing language with the content of the unit. Even in the course of today, we could see from the beginning of the day towards the end 
how those scaffolds, those supports, those opportunities to practice oral language built the confidence and the skills of her students that by the end of today, they were leaving here in a different place than they came in. If you only have a few cups of it and you want to make a profit, you increase the price of each cup of lemonade.